Okay. Yeah, we've got it. We've got it. I'm here. We got five. So we have a quorum for the committee. All right. Cool. Uh, at this time, we will call the Long Range Planning Commission meeting to back into order. Um, um, I'd like to um, move to advance um, the second item on the agenda, which is the discussion of UDC amendments uh, up at this time to talk about. Just a point of order. Do we need to do a roll call since we have a quorum achieved for the record? We can for the record. Okay. Uh, Lyndon Johnson. Present. Dominic. Jackson. Lynn. I'm sorry, Cawthorn. Atkins. Here. Chavez. Here, sir. Bowman. Present. Gage Watts. We do have a quorum. All right. So again, I'd like to move to advance the second item on the agenda. This is talking about the Long Range Committee agenda. Discuss proposed UDC amendments. Discuss the UDC amendment. If I can get a second. Second. So we have a motion and a second to advance. The second might to move to advance on the second item on the on the agenda. There any questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. So that passes. Okay, um, I'd like to move to amend number 18 uh, by adding the following at the end of paragraph B. Uh, this shall not apply to operational recreational vehicles located in the RA residential agricultural or RE residential estate zoning districts. I would second that. Okay. So I have a, a motion by Commissioner Dominic, seconded by Commissioner Johnson to add to number 18 um, that language. Are there any questions on that particular language? No, sir. No questions. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, that passes. So what we would do now since before the meeting is adjourned, we want to add this to our uh, work session agenda. And we need to wait till he, he gets to agenda editions to right. And then, yeah, and, and then once we get to agenda this, we will have one today. So that would be it. Yeah. Got it. So, so now the um, long, long range planning commission meeting is moved to adjourn. To adjourn. All right. All right. All right, now I call to order <clears throat> the Cattle Parish Commission uh, work session of November 18th at 3, uh, 3.39. We got one. He's got to come, come in. Come in. Okay. Come in there. What's up, Gerald? Hey, how you doing? You doing all right? Yes, sir. Might as well, yes, <laughs> All right, roll call, Mr. Hopkins. Right. Dominic. Present. Lyndon Johnson. Present. Jackson. Lynn. Bowman. Present. Hawthorne. Gage Watts. Middleton. Here. Atkins. Here. Chavez. Smith. Here, sir. Lewis Johnson. Present. We have a quorum, sir. Thank you, sir. We're going to have our invocation by Commissioner Lewis Johnson and our pledge of allegiance by Commissioner Mike Middleton. Please stand. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we come before you now in the name of Jesus, in whose name there is peace and fullness of joy. Lord, we thank you now for this day, O oh God. We thank you for your gift of life. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for all that are here on today, O oh God. Lord, we pray that you would, by your spirit and by your power, put us on one accord, O oh Lord. We pray that all that we say and all that we do would give you glory. We pray, O oh God, for our city, for our parish, for our state, and for our nation, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that the decisions that we make, O oh God, will be for the right reason and pleasing to you, O oh God. But we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for your grace, and we thank you for your mercy. Oh, yeah. And this is our prayer in the precious and perfect name of Jesus Christ, our <coughs> Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Everyone, please face the American flag. Place your right hand over your heart. If you're a uh, veteran, you have the option to render a brow salute and recite with me the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under, under God, God, indivisible, all right, thank you, commissioners. Uh, I do know we have one agenda addition.
need to vote on expanding the go ahead yeah I have a um, I move to add an item to request to expand the agenda to request that the MPC and zoning administrator suspend enforcement of section 8.10 of the UDC until such time as the Commission can properly address this issue second. second all right now we're voting on expanding the agenda to add the addition yeah, public hearing we had to make a public hearing. hearing. Uh, do we have anyone that'd like to speak for the agenda addition? <laughs> Briefly. Summary. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kathy Hall. I live at 6862 North Park Lane, Shreveport, Louisiana. And I'm here today representing North Park Estates. Um, our concern is for the UDC that nobody was notified about this. And they're just now starting to enforce this in our area. And so our neighbors are getting cited for violations of recreational vehicles and such. And we weren't even aware of this. So, I mean, we live outside the city limits for a reason. So, yes, and I'm being told a lot. I'm getting educated today about this. Yes, so that, that's why I'm here. Um, I spoke earlier trying to get it amended and um, that, that sort of thing. Okay. That's it. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anybody else that would like to speak for adding the agenda addition? Do we have anybody that would like to speak against adding the agenda addition? I think she's coming <clears throat> in favor. Okay. Ma'am, I'm assuming you're at, uh, for adding the agenda addition? No, I'm against, against it. Against it? Okay. Yes. Just want to make sure for the Sarah record. Sarah Harville, 5340 Albany Road, Shreveport. Um, we have been living there 13 years. We have had, um, we keep up our yard. We live smack dab in between several double wides that do the same, that keep up their yards and looks real nice around us. And we've been parking our camper in the front for 13 years. So I don't know what the problem is. Okay. Well, she's in favor. Okay. You'd, you'd be in favor off to the it? side you know it's not in the front yard it's off to the you're side in you're, in you're in favor you're not against it. oh I'm favored of it <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, don't know okay. I walked in late I'm sorry it's okay <laughs> oh, we're we're just, we're just, no that's perfectly fine we're just trying to get it uh, for the record so thank you Albany Road there are several people several of my neighbors who are sitting over there that are against it okay or for it excuse me for it's keeping it <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Got another one in favor. Coming. Sharon and Don Adley, we live at 3148 High Watha. We've lived there since 1993, RV since maybe 2000, uh, 2012. Okay. Yeah. Um, we use it, it really was a conden contingency plan. It, it floods there, uh, the light goes out, we, we use the generator on it. We really <laughs> need it. Our, our yard is nice, clean, everything looks, yeah. but we did get cited. Okay, and, yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Dunn. I appreciate it. Correct. Okay. We're going to fix that though. Okay. Is there anybody else that would like to speak on? Um, sure. This is actually just for expanding, expanding. the agenda. Right. Really, what this is? Yeah, suspended. <laughs> it's Jane expanded. Tapp, B forty three eighty Acorn Circle. We've learned a lot here in the past hour, so I just want to kind of reiterate that I would like to see all of those that were supposedly notified that their zoning was changed from RA to RE, that they be notified properly and with whatever means is necessary so that they can know they either have an issue or they don't have an issue. And we don't have hullabaloo and questions and unanswered questions that they know what's going on with their property and then they can make uh, decisions based on that. Absolutely, thank you ma'am. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? Gary L. Shelton, 852 Edge Boulevard. I've been living there about 34 years, and I've always had an RV parked in the front. I keep them up. I don't, you know, they don't look bad. And, you know, when you move out to a place out in the country like that, 
outside the city limits where you can have some. And everybody don't have enough money to pay storage for something like that. And I, if, you, if you can't have something like that, what's the need of living out like that? Mm. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Shelton. Would anybody else like to speak before we close the expansion? Got one more. Curtis Davis, 5562 Pine Hill Road. <clears throat> I don't know how many of y'all have children or grandchildren that play softball, but it gets expensive. Baseball. Hotels and all baseball. that. Baseball. And baseball, too. Okay. I bought an <laughs> RV because my granddaughter played travel ball. Now I get citations saying I have to move my RV, take it someplace else to park it, something like that. And I, I don't see why they're stepping outside the city. If you come through the city of Shreveport, on the way in, I looked on Highway 1, and here's fifth wheels and everything all parked all along the road. But it looks like they're kind of just picking on North Shreveport right now. Okay. That's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Davis. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming down here. The, uh, the proper protocol is that we have to expand the agenda, and we have to vote on it unanimously. So I thank you for your opinion speaking so that every commissioner hears your voice and uh, respectively expands the agenda to allow us to add this agenda addition so we can vote on this and take care of your needs today. So thank you for coming down here. All right, I saw nobody that wanted to speak against it. So, Mr. Hopkins, you want to vote? At this time, we need to vote to expand and add to the agenda. Get a little workout. Mario. Hey. Pre-workout. He, he can do it. And that passes eight with four out of the chamber. So that can you just explain to them this is just Absolutely. added to the agenda, then we'll we'll vote well, on it under new business well, or well, business? Yeah, unless you would like to suspend the rules, go ahead and vote I on make, this. Still, and yeah. let these I recommend we do that. I make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Take the time up now. Is they already here? All right, we have a motion on the floor and a second by Commissioner Middleton to suspend the rules. <coughs> We're doing this, uh, citizens, so that we can go ahead and vote on this and get you guys out of here. We know you have work and kids to get tend to. So to please. <laughs> Commissioner Johnson, you have? Uh, okay. I'm on the board. This is just a real quick. Middleton. Commissioner Folks, Middleton. I'm about to finish four years. I've never seen anything float through as fast as this has for y'all today. <laughs> <laughs> just want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is what happens when we work together. I'm telling you. All right, please vote. Just uh, suspend the rules. This is suspend the rules. <laughs> Bowman, Mr. Jackson. I just mark me as a yeah. All right, that suspends the rules. All right. Now we'll vote on the issue. All right. And you, you want me to read the issue again? Yes, I've, please. I've yep, got it. Okay, go ahead. Sir. So I'm, I'm at this time. I move to request that the MPC and zoning administrator suspend the enforcement of <laughs> section 8.10 of the UDC until such time as the commission no, addresses this issue. No, all right. Got a motion on the floor from Commissioner uh, Doug Dominic and a second by Commissioner LBJ. Johnson. So briefly, you know, Ms. Harvard, I know you come in late. If you came in late, this yeah. is, we talked about this as two. So this will stop those letters and stop any enforcement at this time, okay? okay. Or well, should. Can you let us know if there's any kind of change in it or anything? Can you mail us? Well, we're, or I can't mail everybody a letter. So. <laughs> Um, I think Dr. Wilson and Commissioner Johnson are working on the issue that due to the fact that there was some concerns about that there was some rezoning from RE's to RA to RE that they're going to try to uh, notify because Ms. Tappy was brought up a good issue that those people just weren't notified if it's not a thousand people then hopefully at least send out a little comment card or um, something postcard okay. And then <clears throat> uh, Henry or Donna, yeah. is there a way that we can do this retroactively or because they already got the letter, uh, how does this work in, in retrospect? What this will do, um, Commissioner, is basically <coughs> it will be prospective. If the MPC uh, agrees with it, they will suspend enforcement because right now this is just an ask. Okay. In order to get the actual um, ordinance changed or code provision changed, you all will need to pass a resolution or some kind of formal communication for the MPC's mm -hmm. consideration at their next meeting. 
And then if they decide to make the change, they will send it back up to you to actually change the ordinance. Okay. So we need to thank you, Donna. Ready. Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Um, thank you, um, Mr. President. Um, we're having quite a bit of discussion as it relates to MPC. I see Mr. Clark is here. Right. I want to see whether or not he uh, would like to address or is there anything you'd like to say on this issue at this time? I think, uh, real briefly, I think we've had this discussion previously, but I shared with you the processes that were being implemented by the MPC staff and directives that I gave to the zoning administrator who falls under my uh, direction. Uh, we, are, we are in favor of looking and researching and uh, at uh, the difference between how the city operates and the parish operates. And uh, if you remember, Mr. Atkins, you and I were talking about that at this meeting that it may be, it may be counterproductive because that's the reason that you all adopted the UDC was because of the uh, desires that you had for the development of the city of Shreveport and those areas on the uh, edges of the city of Shreveport which fall into the planning limits. Uh, but we are more than happy to, to look at uh, uh, and seeing if there are, if there's room for differences between how RVs are addressed in the parish and how RVs and boats are addressed in the city. Uh, basically, you have the same properties. Uh, you have residential properties in the parish and you have residential properties in the city. But, like I said, we're more than happy to look at uh, making a recommendation for possible amendments to the ordinance, but that's the law right now. And you're perfectly within your control to suspend our ability to enforce the law, but we'll be more than happy to, to review everything we're doing. Thank you. Commissioner Clark, thank you. Hang on. So. Uh, Commissioner Johnson, so is that his all? He still has the floor. Um, yes, I just, um, we, you know, I just want to give them an opportunity to be on record and at least to have some input on a topic that clearly uh, involves him and what he does. So. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Doug Dominic. Yeah, so if y'all weren't here, Adam was here earlier. We talked almost an hour with him. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, if we vote to, you know, request that it be suspended, y'all going to stop this, the enforcement of this? We would, we would uh, cease to enforce uh, and the ordinance, and, and we would ask that uh, because Adam doesn't speak for the MPC. Only I can speak on behalf of the MPC. We would ask that, uh, you know, we have time to explore uh, amendments to the ordinance. And not just totally suspend. Yeah, well, I think that's in there until it says until such time as the commission addresses this right. issue. So to give us time to come back and completely amend our ordinance or um, right, we would, we would we would do uh, some additional research and make recommendations to the MPC board to send a recommendation to the parish commission. Okay, thank you. All right, Th uh, thank you, Mr. Clark, for an amicable thank solution. You. All right, guys, please vote. This is it. We vote no. <clears throat> what we vote no. Mr. Hopkins, you want to so go ahead and read it? To, move, uh, to request the MPC and zoning administrator to suspend enforcement of section 8.10 of the UDC until such time as the commission addresses this issue. Is this the agenda edition or? This is, yes. Yes. This yes. is the okay. agenda edition. That's correct. That's Thank you. And that passes eight with four in the chamber. Congratulations, guys. Move to uh, go back to Rainbow City. No, 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 that was, that was <laughs> the actual. So we moved. We are on the agenda. That was the vote. That was for the vote. Thank y'all. If you need me. Well, Todd, I was asking, did we just add it to the agenda or was that the actual? No, this vote? was the agenda edition. That we we actually voted on it. But okay. we moved it up so since they were Captain. here. Captain. Yeah, we had already moved it to add. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's why I was asking. Captain. 
All right, we'll give a quick second for the chamber to empty out. We have uh, citizens' comments. Citizens who wish to address the commission must fill out a comment card and follow forward to the president or their clerk of commission. I see none. Mr. Hopkins, do you have any citizen comments over there? I, I, I do not. No, sir. All right, moving on. See no citizen comments. We have no visitors. We move to administrative report. This one, the commissioners, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Well, this one, let you all know the financial, October financial reports at your station, and, and that's the only thing that we have today for you all. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Wilson. All right, now we move on to commission remarks and communiques. Commissioner LBJ. Yeah, we had a long range planning commission, a long range <laughs> planning meeting, which uh, convened, well, we recessed and then reconvened right before this meeting to try to handle the issue with the uh, call it recreational vehicles <coughs> section. Uh, 8.10. 8.10. Hmm. On number 18 on the form that we had. Uh, I got numerous calls from citizens in, in District 2 and District 1 um, about um, those letters that went out to them saying that they was in violation. And some of them have had RVs and boats in front or on the side of their homes for over many years. 30 years. <clears throat> and yeah, well, the latest one I heard was over like, 30 years that they had um, parked either in the front or on the side. And so um, I think one of the main issues was is, you know, when we decided to to go with the UDC, um, there were public hearings. But if a, if a homeowner or resident of, of Caddo Parish, if they felt that it wasn't, you know, going to affect them, they didn't go to, it. you know, they figured, well, that's nothing that would concern me. But now they're realizing that, you know, some of those changes did affect them. And so by getting that letter, it riled up a lot of unreadiness. And so uh, the, one of the main concerns is how do we um, get that information out to the citizens of, of Caddo Parish? And so I'll try to work with Dr. Wilson to see how we can actually try to do that because, you know, everyone doesn't have internet at home. Everyone, I mean, newspapers, not nobody really is buying newspapers. We've got a few people that do, but you know that's that's still not a 100% way of reaching everybody. And we got to do better on the communication from, I say, when we make those changes to those property owners. And so that's one of the major things that came out today, along with Section 8.10. And uh, hopefully that we'll have a meeting Thursday at 12 o'clock if everyone is available. Got your tiny home. You've got a tiny home. Yeah, um, yeah. The tiny homes. That discussion will come up too. Um, I think that would be in our next meeting as well. Um, committee meeting. Well, like I say, will be Thursday at twelve o'clock. Right. So, if that's a good, good time for you guys, we can have a quorum. And um, if it's not, then I need to know so we can set a time so that we can actually do this because we got thirty. Six items that we need to look at yes, and either approve or reject. You mean for the committee? Yeah, for the committee. committee. Good, so. yeah. For the committee. So uh, we need five out of eight. Yes, sir. And uh, I got I got to uh, be able to have a quorum in order so that we can move on these things. You're not on it. So if it's another time, who's on? Where's the committee? You have the agenda. Is Lewis on it? Committee, you need the committee members? No, you're not on it. You're not on it, Lewis. It's Lyndon, Doug, Stephen, Lynn, Atkins, I, Chavez, yeah, me, Stormy. John, can you make lunch, Stephen? I can't make lunch. All right. Uh, Gerald? Yes, sir. Mario? Count me in, Commissioner. All right, so we should have five. I can't make lunch. All right, we should have five. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let me down there. All right, thank you. LPJ, Commissioner Doug Dominic. We own communication committee? Yes, sir. So, um, uh, Crystal, so I just sent Q 
Ken a text. I just we're gonna do it nine o'clock Wednesday, okay? So LB, if you if you can make it, we're gonna have the grand opening of the compactor site in there at North Caddo, uh, right there at Blanchard at nine o'clock Wednesday. If you can make it, because it's joins your district too. Um, Todd, I hope you get to come too. So nine o'clock. Nine o'clock Wednesday, okay? All right. Thank you, Commissioner. LBJ for the second. Yeah, um, I've also forgot that uh, Friday at, I think it's 11 o'clock, we're looking to do the MLK Garden grand opening if the weather doesn't uh, rain us out. So I think we'll probably make that final decision Wednesday or Thursday. Wednesday. If I make the final decision Wednesday, we're going to actually have it. If not, we'll postpone it to a later date. But uh, right now it's at Friday, 11 o'clock at the MLK Community Garden, uh, LaGuardia and MLK. <laughs> Sorry, one thing. Go ahead. So Ken's texting me. Apparently he is, he is watching this from above. He says, no, no, it's not open to the public until next week. So we're going to have our opening, I guess a ribbon cutting Wednesday, but it'll be open next week to the public. Got it. Okay. All right, I see no other commissioners on there. We'll move on to the president's report. I'll yield uh, for the president till Thursday. Move on to old business. We have no old business. We move to new business. Authorized introduction of ordinance number 5936 of 2019. Move to advance. Sorry. We've got a uh, motion to advance from LBJ and a second from Mike Middleton. No one to speak on it, please vote. Whoops, I accidentally hit no, I meant to hit yes. There we go. That passes eight with four out of the chamber. Authorized ordinance number 5937-2019. Meaning, meaning the budget of estimate revenues and expenses <coughs> capital outlay in the amount of 175000 to provide an appropriation to add traffic light to Southern Loop. Move to advance. Second. Second. All right. The motion moves by Commissioner. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Atkins, go ahead and speak on it. May I, may I ask uh, Dr. Wilson to give us the background? You mentioned that this is going to be back on the agenda. Just for all of our colleagues, can you tell us why this is back on the agenda when this has been in the budget historically? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Commissioners. This item has been in the budget for the last couple of years, and we have first uh, been embarking with the state to do a, uh, a turnabout at that location, Wall Lake Road in Southern Loop. And uh, so the state funding kind of backed out because it was over a million dollars. And we were looking for some, some type of traffic control device at that location. So we thought this would be the lesser of the of what we can do that would still be effective. So the money was appropriated right. after I've been in the budget going in the third year. So at, at much higher level at three hundred thousand for our part. So this was far less than that. So I do encourage you all to pass this because um, we thought it'd be a good idea to move forward with this idea. Yeah. And so, just thank basically you, that's how we got to where we are. The start out as a turnabout, but that did not materialize. No. So the money was already appropriated for that project. And it was it was three hundred thousand that was originally appropriated for a, a roundabout, sharing with the city. That's right. Uh, that that mm -hmm. wasn't going to happen. Uh, so we dropped down to a traffic light again, sharing with the city. Right. Uh, the tr total cost in the traffic light is two fifty, as opposed to what we originally thought was six hundred for a roundabout. Mm -hmm. Uh, theoretically, our yeah. half of that 250 is, of course, 125, mm -hmm. but the city is asking us to provide some long, some maintenance Naturally. Uh, uh, funding as well. Yeah. The city, so the, the the city council has approved it uh, in mm -hmm. this current state, but the mayor, I don't know, the mayor is still working through the budget. Yeah, we're still negotiating. <laughs> but I sure yes. would appreciate y'all support. This is an area, as mm -hmm. Mike Middleton, knows, uh, Commissioner Middleton knows, this is a, a dangerous area in, in our part of town. It is. Lots of traffic moving quickly um, and, and, and no street lights. Um, so so I appreciate y'all's support. Thank you, Commissioner Atkins. I have Commissioner Bowman that second it and uh, first one, Commissioner LBJ to speak. Yeah, I was going to ask the question that the 175, is, was that just half or whatever? But I heard what you're saying is half plus some plus kind of more. maintenance agreement. It was 250 is the estimated <laughs> cost, t capital cost. So our half of that is 125. And then we're putting 50000 on what we are proposing in, in Dr. Wilson's negotiation with the city. We've been proposing that we put an additional 50000 for future maintenance costs. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's still in discussion. All right. So is, is this light in the city or is it in the parish? 
it would be in the accident. city limits or is it outside the city limits? I'm yeah, putting it that right way. Now, right now, there's a common intersection, but it will be solely in the city. Okay, so we're helping the city out with a traffic yes, light. Well, when, when this well, all started, you know, Wallace Lake Road is is, owned, is maintained by the parish. Yeah. Southern yeah. Loop is maintained by the city. Yeah. And now that they've recently, just in the last month or so, they yes. annexed it. Uh, right, that's, that's what I was going to say. But so, it was actually theirs per the city. Can't hear you. It was actually um, agreed. You all had a cooperative, uh, cooperative endeavor agreement that dates back to 2001 with the city assuming maintenance of that intersection. And when? 2001. That the city would assume? This is prior to that, that predates the annexation. Right, okay, okay. that's a long. But we agreed to help at that time, that or they agreed to help us at that time. No, yeah. they agreed to assume responsibility for oh, that the, intersection. Okay, so they assume responsibility the intersection, but now we going in half to help them to get it done. Now, <laughs> look like I saw on the the bond issue that the traffic lights were like three hundred thousand dollars. So are we? There's some other location, not this particular one, I believe. No, so this is just a, a plain traffic light. This <coughs> no turn. That's signal, the best we could do, huh? Right, it's full okay. way, full way intersection traffic light. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, LBJ. Commissioner Atkins is good at getting a deal. Good, yeah. good job, John. Yeah. We're gonna go. <laughs> Commissioner gonna uh, Doug Dominic. So let me get this straight. This is at the corner or the intersection of Southern Loop and Wallace Lake, correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. Wallace Lake is our road. Yes. But I guess part of it was taken over with the annexation by the city. Is that correct? Yes, sir, the intersection. Part Recently, the intersection. was that what was done, Donna? Yes, sir. August, August of 2019. The, the annexation was there. There is hmm. a cooperative endeavor agreement that predates the annexation. Okay, you're you're, you're kind of blurring out. What now? The annexation and the cooperative endeavor agreement. Be a little bit more specific. Um, Commissioner is long. I'm so sorry. What 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 I would suggest <laughs> is that you take a t take the time to read it. But the uh, cooperative endeavor agreement gave the city uh, maintenance in custody and control of the intersection prior to them annexing it. And that was done in 2001? Yes. Okay, but basically what we're coming in is helping them out to put up the, the, the stoplight, if I'm reading this correct, at this point. And that's being recommended by y'all? Yes, sir. Okay. Just to make, if I may. That's a lot of Mr. growth Chairman, out there. Um, Commissioner just, Jackson, may he? Uh, hang on, I still got the floor. Oh, I thought you said okay. Evening. No, I just. Hope we're not opening up a bunch of can of worms where we start putting up city lights is the mm -hmm. only thing. But I know I'm aware of that issue, so this time I'll be voting in favor. Is that all? I'm done now. Okay. Jackson. Commissioner Jackson, uh, Commissioner Atkins wanted to make a clarification. Would you mind if you? I'd be happy to yield, Commissioner Jackson. Okay. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. I was trying to get some more. Um, just want everybody to understand that, and as I mentioned, you know, we do. The parish does own and maintain the vast majority of Wallace Lake Road. Uh, it's only been, and in, in, in certain commitments were made during that process, or earlier, pardon me, the commitments were made earlier, or I should say uh, uh, changes were implied earlier. Um, but this true annexation of that intersection just occurred in August. Um, and Commissioner, or pardon me, Councilman Bowman has stated that they could de annex it <laughs> if necessary uh, for a period of time. So it's just something we're trying to get done. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Commissioner, <coughs> Commissioner Jackson? Uh, so, Dr. Wilson, did I hear you say that the street light is wholly in the city of Shreveport? It would be based on the, on the recent innovation <coughs> of the. the so this is a street light completely in the city of Shreveport. Yes, sir. And the street light sits on a parish road or a city of street. Well, the city one, city. Okay, I, I, no issues with that. Uh, I would like to look at uh, turn signal that needs to be done at uh, MLK and North Market because I have seen two T bones. Uh, I'm just saying. I have seen two T-bones over there in the last month. And I think the process that is used to determine 
uh, if there is a turn signal, mm -hmm. is how many T-bones, how many head-on T-bone collisions that they have, which I think is quite a flawed method. But I think that predates a lot of us being here. But I would like to have a conversation about that because I do like this uh, collaboration. I do like this collaboration that I see between the parish and the city. And so um, I just want it to be known that when I come for some same collaborative suggestions in another area, that we have this uh, open mind mutual. <laughs> and mutual understanding that uh, we can turn a phrase. <laughs> uh, uh, we are within our legal. Actually, I am still researching I, that. I understand. <laughs> so, but I imagine that this is probably a public safety, yes, sir, public it, purpose. Yes. And it was based on a traffic study that was conducted by the city of Shreveport. Right. Yes, well, sir. if we got to do a traffic study on yes, MLK. Yes, sir. Nope. And North Market. Yes, sir. Let, let's let's do the traffic study because I think there's a whole lot of traffic coming through there. And just last week, there was a T-bone accident. Okay. Somebody was trying to turn, and you got all that traffic turning to go into the parish uh, off of MLK. Uh, so I just want us to be right, mindful of that mm -hmm. uh, as we go forward. Yes, and. Uh, Keep that into consideration. Now, I, I, I know you will. I just, not you, I'm talking about the people around the horse. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Mike Stella Middleton. Bowman. <clears throat> Thank you. I think uh, Commissioner Jackson's uh, comments are good. However, both uh, Dr. MLK Road or Street and LA1 are state highways. Mm -hmm. Both of them are so where this one at Wallace Lake Road and um, Southern Loop are city and parish. Thank you. May I clarify like John clarified? Uh, yeah, let me, I'm going to give the floor to <laughs> Commissioner Jackson real quick. Let's and then uh, we'll, then we'll wrap quick. this up. I think we're doing all of these under cooperative endeavors, and so I'm sure there's a cooperative endeavor that can be done with the city of Shreveport. Yes, a cooperative endeavor can be done with the state of Louisiana. <laughs> don't urge them, though. Don't urge us. I just wanted to make sure that we keep all of these things in, in perspective. So I want to make sure that the citizens traveling down in South Shreveport are safe and can move around. <laughs> I want to make sure the citizens in North Shreveport okay. are safe and can move around. I think Commissioner Lyndon Johnson would probably agree with that. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner LBJ. <laughs> so I, I just also want to clarify this. We already have a light there. Not yet. I'll turn no, we do. We, no, we, we do have a light. There's a light already at that intersection. No, 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 but we, we, what we are talking about. You talking about MLK? You're talking about MLK. I just want to turn sick. Uh, let's get Jermaine. Hey, guys, let's, turn sick. This is not Jermaine anymore. Well, I'll bring it up and communicate. That's fine. Thank you. I, I'll bring it up and communicate. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Parliamentarian Bowman. That was it. And I just wanted to, in support, say that this came up as a result of public safety. And since then, the uh, area has grown. And so, uh, reduced traffic. I'm not debating that. All right. Got a motion on I the floor. I wasn't debating, period. I was saying a statement. Motion on the floor from Commissioner Atkins and a second from Bowman. Please vote. I bring you back to the case on family. It'd be safe for the end. <laughs> Bowman. Thanks, sir. That passes eight with four out of the chamber. Authorized introduction of ordinance number 5938. Close and abandon the road. Dedication is located in Black Bayou, Lake <coughs> Subdivision Unit. Unit number two. So moved. Second. All right. um, just briefly, I uh, wanted to talk on this. This is something that's being recommended by our, the Public Works Department. There was a, um, a road dedication that was made in this area, and it was determined when we accepted it into the system, the road was made by the developer, but a survey has been done, and it's not in the correct location, so we're going to actually have to abandon the road dedication and then uh, come back and approve it if I'm correct. Is someone here with the public works? Jimmy? Am I correct on all that? We need to abandon this one and then we're going to come back and uh, approve. You, you, you won't have to approve anything further. We're getting rid of these dedications. The road is not located in these dedications. So all the adjoining landowners are working together, we're abandoning these road dedications, and as soon as that action is taken, 
I've got a plat signed by all of the adjoining landowners that'll, t that'll fix where the road is that'll fix where the that'll dedicate where the road actually is okay thank you Jimmy yes sir all right I see no one wanting to speak please vote that passes with eight eight with four out of the chamber authorized resolution number 94 2019 authorized cattle parish minister road to approve the assignment bill of sale and conveyance of state agency leases. Move to advance. Second. Got a motion by Commissioner Atkins, second by Commissioner Jackson. Would you like to speak on the motion? It's a small uh, energy lease, um, I can, a little over an acre in, in, in District 9. I'm not sure about District 1. I see no one wanting to speak. Please vote. That passes eight with four out of the chamber. Authorized selection of external auditor for Parish of Caddo. Move to advance. Second. All right, got a motion from Commissioner Atkins, second by Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Atkins, would you like to speak on that motion? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just remind you all, we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the Finance Committee um, reviewed the, the RFPs from three uh, from three CPA firms, and uh, Carr Riggs and Ingram is the is currently the, the leader in that uh, evaluation. And Commissioner LBJ had asked, uh, you know, he wanted to make sure that the whole body would be voting on this selection. This is the opportunity for the whole body to vote on that selection. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner LBJ. Oh yeah, I wanted to know what was the difference between CRI and HMB. Heard, heard Macro and Vestal. Yeah. What's the difference as it applies to the fees? Or they well, the fees are the same. So what, what gave CRI the advantage over HM, <coughs> HMB? Well, there were several uh, qualifications that we scored. One was uh, size of the entities that they currently uh, audit, experience of staff, um, and they all were very close. Um, but CRI does do larger governments. They do the school board. They do the city of Shreveport. They do the county fair sheriff's office. They do the district attorney's office. So they they do uh, larger governments. Whereas uh, Herd Macro and Vessel, they do do audit the city of Bossier. But other than the, other than that, it's more smaller governments such as County 911, the district court. And so for the sheer size. Um, entity that's that was the reason why CRI um, scored a little higher okay so can you send us the evaluation <coughs> form that y'all use sure okay thank you thank you Commissioner Commissioner Jackson uh, yes some of my <coughs> question has been asked but I do uh, want to know is this the audits that we uh, or is this just the annual financial audit. this is a regular audit that we have been done but this is not the ones that we were in the uh, no, sir. With the different departments this is not and the stuff. External okay. Yeah, th those well, are those are the internal audits that you're thinking of. This is the 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 financial, ex the financial audit that's the, done annually. Yes. That goes to the legislative. Okay. So yeah. You get your okay. annual report off of okay. and all that. Nice. Right. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. Thank you. We're gonna start making some kind of distinction between it so we yeah, know. That was what I mean. I if it says external financial audit policy. or yeah, internal <laughs> financial. Audit. Yeah, we put financial in, and then we'll know. So the, the difference is the external auditor comes in and does just financial so that the word external and the word internal is your differentiation there internal does internal processes and the internal auditor audits internal processes or the ex and they work as if they're one of us uh, external auditors come out from the outside looking in yeah just but on but see in my world when you got an external auditor it's an external audit so even though we have a third party comes in to do uh, internal audit mm -hmm. is still external in my world. Okay. So an well, internal audit is awesome. the employees themselves are actually doing it. So that's why it throws me off. And if we can just put financial on this one, it, it uh, I, I would know the difference between the two. Okay. We'll do that next time. That's, that's all. Thank you, finance, for putting this together. I, I see no one else wanting uh, to speak uh, on it. Hold on. Oh. 
Commissioner Jackson, for the second. You too, slow. He's not going to go up on us, are they? <coughs> After the, no, you know, change orders right. and all this stuff. Okay. okay. All right. So, so, so they locked into this. this. Uh, they locked into this, or is this a up to amount? Uh, it's it's an up to, not to exceed amount. Gotcha. And gotcha. it's actually lower than the amounts that we've paid in years past. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Jackson. Yeah. All right, guys, please vote. And that passes eight with four out of the chamber. Seven. That moves to uh, Thursday. That's yes. seven with, with five out of the chamber. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Just I know some people are in the audience. They'll be back on Thursday to watch. Authorize Ms. Eric Bryan as the acting affairs administrator. Second. And second. Got a motion and a second. Would you like to speak on that motion? No. Yeah. All right. Except explain it to it. But Erica's on the TV watching right now. If we're going to press the button, mm -hmm. please vote. Now hold on, guys. Commissioner Jackson. Oh no, I'm for the last one. Okay. No, I'm trying to vote. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Go. Sorry about that. I guess I got a little anxious. <laughs> <clears throat> that passes seven, five out of the chamber. Okay. Authorize the men to commission clerk's qualifications. So move to Thursday. Second. Commissioner LBJ. Yes. Um, Donna, by changing this, won't we... Because it's already posted, and it's been posted now for, I think, a week or so. Mm -hmm. So, one week, and we said it was had to be posted for two weeks. So, if this passes and changes, then is there a reposting, or is there a uh, extension of the two weeks, or do we still keep the two weeks, and the people who potentially can now be qualified will then be able to qualify within a few days? Um, I believe to be on the safe side, you would need to extend the new posting um, for at least as long as the um, original posting has been up. Okay, so in doing so, we already had a timeline established because we already know <coughs> when our clerk, clerk, clerk is going to be out. And so we were trying to make sure that we had the timeline, we had the transitional time, and now with this, we'll then push that back. Um, I think that's one, one question I had. The second question is, from the conversation we had when we were discussing this, the main thing I heard is you didn't want to have 300 applicants. And so we needed to make the qualifications, you know, pretty much tighter in order for you not to have that. Because with this kind of language, and if I'm wrong, let me know, <clears throat> that if I'm an English teacher working in Cal Perry school system, then now I can apply for this job, and it'll be one of the ones we have to interview. Is that a, is that a right assumption of that, with this language that's added here? No, I can. I can. Well, I'm actually done. Okay. <laughs> um. I would say no because I'm not sure how an English teacher's experience would translate to uh, required knowledge, skills, and abilities. So I would think that that would open it up to people who have worked in government settings before, but not other than that. Okay, so you got an English teacher or a political science teacher or a history teacher who has been in the military <coughs> working with the government. That's not. <coughs> I mean, if their experience hasn't, yeah. has not required, I mean, uh, prepared them for this type of role, that I don't think would be counted as uh, knowledge, skills, and abilities. But that's more objective by putting this language in. So now it leads it up to the, to the HR person to say, well, yes or no, or if that person ears being bent a certain way that now that person a person of that particular type of magnitude could either be accepted or not and not keeping it more 
fine tuned to saying you got to have this, 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 and that. We had four or five criteria that the person has to meet in order to be preferred, in order to be an interviewee. Now we're saying that uh, equivalent combination of training and experience. So what is that? There's no definition of that. It doesn't say that if you got an associate degree, you got to have this many years. If you got a, uh, a GED, you can have that. It doesn't say. <clears throat> um, the commissioner, knowledge, skills, and abilities are going to be someone <laughs> who's worked in this setting, a government setting. True. Or a clerk setting. Correct. That's not going to be someone who was with the military police. That's not going to be a file clerk in the army oh, or you know anyone like that. Right. I mean, because those skills don't translate to this particular job. But if they can do the correlation that it shows that it can, then what? If they can do that in a resume, then I guess they can be considered. I'd like to see it, though, because they need to work on mine. <laughs> Where are you going? You're not going anywhere. I'm not, but I'm just saying. I just, I would like to see it. Is Donna right, qualified so, for the so job? Do, are there any, are there any <laughs> department heads or, or assistant department heads that have a qualification that you got to have a, a bachelor's degree in yeah. a particular subject? I would defer to Ms. McGee if she's here on okay. that. Cause it, I don't could you restate the question, Commissioner Johnson? Are there any department heads, directors, or assistant directors that have to have a specialized degree or a degree as a requirement for that particular job? Uh, yes, all our probation officers must have a degree. Um, the directors uh, typically prefer to have a degree, not necessarily required, but all equivalent years of experience. But as it relates to specifics of the job, <coughs> probation officers must have a degree before they can be a probation officer in the organization. Okay. Yeah. That's the only that's the only career field that has that distinction. Oh, in ours, and, because and, we have to have a graduate degree. Okay, of course the lawyers and CPAs, of course, they have to have that credential to be even to have the CPA. So the finance director and the assistant finance director both yes, have to have correct. CPAs. Correct. And the attorneys have to have JDs. Okay. All right. Supposed to. <laughs> okay, thank you. I missed out. Sorry. <laughs> Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I was um, really looking at a um, looking at some other human resource information when um, I wanted to address this. And as Commissioner Johnson says, um, in order to um, change it if that's what the body, uh, the pleasure of the body, it could very well extend the process to whatever amount of time or whatever. But um, I think that if there is something that would make the process right, um, then I think that to extend it a week or whatever it would, would be well worth that uh, in that respect. Uh, the language that um, is being requested is simply the language that it was prior. That's right. So it's, when it's not doing anything different, and it was an oversight uh, on my part, or I would have asked the question even at that point, uh, when it was initially changed, uh, why would we change, why, is there a reason that we're changing it? And if so, then of course I would be more than willing to accept that and support it at that point, but I'm not sure what that is. And as I look further, I would look throughout the parish, and uh, most of those jobs are, that I think um, equal um, says that degrees are preferred, and I agree with that. I think there is great value to um, those employees who apply who have degrees, and I think that should have great value. So I'm not saying overlook that by any means. But I also think that experience um, has great value. The uh, terms in most of the uh, job requirements or job description says either degrees preferred or it also says education in lieu of. Mm -hmm. But to simply say preferred means that you already will have a preference. The fact that you have a degree means that you're going to have an advantage. And that's a good thing. That's not to minimize that. I think that's a, that's a preference in that respect. But um, I know, and I shouldn't, uh, I won't be overly specific, but I know that in Greenwood, uh, there's a particular clerk who has a lot of experience who's done this job and who, um, who I think would be a decent candidate and uh, in a lot of other areas 
who are qualified, who's familiar with it, who if with the current language would be completely disqualified. So I think that we certainly have got to acknowledge and give every amount of um, support to those who have degrees and give them every consideration in the process. I think that's a good thing that we should do. But I also think that it would be uh, questionable to disqualify or to overlook those people throughout the uh, process who has uh, comparable experience that would at least have an opportunity. Uh, so what I'm asking um, the body to do is to first of all consider simply changing it to where it was, number one, and then number two, simply letting the process work. Letting the process work. So this is the body who will look at those applicants and will make a decision well, you, whether you have a degree or don't have a degree. We don't think that you are going to make that cut. And if not, I think that's fair and reasonable. So uh, because the goal is to have the best candidates that we can, and I'm sure that the process will, I think that the goal would be to expand it and to get the very best as opposed to limiting it uh, simply based on degrees. I'm not against them. I think they're great. I'm thankful for mine. Uh, but also when we look throughout the parish and other areas, we see that there are members who do a great job in various capacities who do not have a degree this position being one of them. So that is why I am asking the body to at least consider, consider um, not taking that out, but to at least give an opportunity to those who have uh, qualifications that this body view as uh, acceptable, I mean have experience that this body would view as acceptable to simply allow to be inclusive uh, for that reason so that we can all do what we all want to accomplish, which is identify the best person for it. So that is why I uh, brought it to the uh, attention of the body, asking for that consideration um, based on that. And I, I'm still not sure why we excluded it unless it was a time thing or whether it's based on time or that type of thing. Those things are important to us, but getting the best qualified person and being as inclusive as we can, I think is um, more important. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner <clears throat> Lewis Johnson. Uh, couldn't say it any better myself, so I'll yield my time and just say that I'm going to support this and move it to Thursday. Parliamentarian Bowman. Yes, sir. And as a result, I too concur, but I'll just make this one statement. Um, when hiring and when you advertise and do things for a job, when they say preferred, and I've had experience, um, I'll just use my experience. I've worked, not to brag, I've been fortunate enough on my resume to work for Congress, state, and I worked in over four higher ed institutions. And when it came to the last one uh, down in New Orleans, Dillard, when they say prefer, sometimes when you come in, that's why they want you to come in and you interview and everything. Sometimes experience trumps that degree and everything else. I have two degrees and, and some in different areas. But the point is, when I went through the interview and after the people saw me and everything else, well, what the job was for required a doctorate. But at the same time, because they had preferred, <coughs> preferred means not limited to. That means it's something that we would like to have, but if we don't, the experience part would then circumvent and trump. No pun intended. Thank you. Right. Did you get the job? I did. Well. <laughs> the only reason I came back was when my mom got sick. We call you doctor. Hmm. Thank you, Commissioner. Hello. Commissioner Jackson for the first time. Yeah. I I'm kind of, uh, and I called you Commissioner Johnson to get some clarification on it, and I reached out to Commissioner Chavez. I'm still waiting for his response. Uh, but uh, I, I was a little confused on it and was a little concerned about it as well uh, as to why we would add it. Now, to answer your question about why we removed it, uh, one, uh, I was in support of removing because it was sort of broad and it kind of, opened it up to almost anybody, but now uh, I have a concern because listening to Attorney Frazier say that a teacher who's worked in civics and government uh, would be excluded, now I'm concerned that, you know, that's a little subjective because I, I, I might think mm. that they qualify under these new terms at this point. So at some point, uh, I think we need to try to figure out what exactly it is that we want 
um, experience at some point. And so, you know, I don't have a problem adding this back in, definitely by no means, um, where, we, where I thought we were trying to exclude anybody. Uh, I like to see the best qualified individual uh, get the job. Um, what I don't want to do is exclude anybody uh, from getting it. Uh, and so that's why the teacher scenario raised the concern for me because if you have a teacher out there who um, has knowledge and is organized and can speak with proficiency about government, why wouldn't they be qualified? I, I think that that's, that's the yeah, who, who the determines person. that? I guess that should be my question is who will determine whether they make the cut? Will H we HR, determine or does HR? HR is slated to do the, the initial screening for you all. Mm -hmm. you know, they do it very professionally. They do it all the time. That's their livelihood. So they will do the initial screening for you all and give you all the list because you may, you may have some so far out that they don't come close to being any of the criteria. So you'll need to see all that. Right. But, and they are pretty well versed in figuring out whose qualification this match the criteria you set for. Yeah. That's what they do for a living. Yeah, but uh, sometimes I've seen that model be totally wrong, <laughs> completely wrong. Uh, and so, and so, uh, you know, I'm not saying that they're going to be wrong. I've just seen it. I've seen people get it wrong sometimes. And you exclude, you, you, and Commissioner Bowman talked about personal experience. I think we've all probably gone through that experience where we felt we were excluded from something that we probably were overqualified for. So that, that's a little bit of a, con, a concern to me. Um, the other question that I had was, uh, and Cheryl is not here. Is there an HR person here that can answer this question? Well, Cheryl, uh, Cheryl's not here at the moment. So there's no way. Okay, because yeah. now don't we need to go back and push our timeline back? Mm. I think we this, need this to. This recommended that you do that. Just make sure everything is on a level playing field. Because I. And so now the people who have submitted, you know, do we have to notify them? What is our so obligation if they, legally? If they submit it, we, they will still be in the pool of candidates. Okay. You're just expanding your pool now. So can between now and Thursday, can we get something from HR? Because this would be an EEOC type thing since we're going through mm -hmm. HR, right? Since All they're right. going through our normal process. Yes, sir. This would be a... And so I just want to make sure that everything is in line from a. I'm going to have Cheryl come explain the process. Right, because we don't want to end up with an employment uh, situation where somebody's claiming the process was tainted, the process was unfair, they changed the rules in the middle of the process. We got, we're out there now, and I saw that it was being advertised. Yes, sir. And so now people can make that claim. Well, y'all changed the rules in the middle of the process, so. I'm, I'm totally fine with advancing this to Thursday. I just think we need to get subject matter expertise and get the right guidance on how we need to uh, go forward because I don't want to subject us to any type of uh, uh, employment liability. And that's something that we do need to think about uh, as we do this process. So uh, those are my concerns and hopefully uh, we can get those addressed. And I'm trying to figure out what Turner Frazier got against teaching. <laughs> I have nothing against teachers. I, I, was I hope not. Class. <laughs> well, I All right, hold on, guys. There's been 30 years in right. education. Let's, let's draw this back in. I got you. LBJ for the second. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, but when we started this discussion, the first thing I heard was we don't want to have 300 plus applicants. That's the first thing. And it was echoed by a number of commissioners about not having so many applicants and having it so general that so many people could qualify to, to have the, to do the interview. So that's why we went in and made the changes to the qualifications. All right, so one qualification is you gotta be a resident of Caddo Parish. Next one is graduated from accredited college university with a degree in business law, public administration, or related field. Next one is five years of progressive Responsible experience in local government is preferred. So that's what we put our preferred at on that piece. Five years of experience in local government is preferred. Uh, and then the other ones, we, we keep in the same. Comprehensive knowledge of the organization functions and operations of parish government. Comp comprehensive knowledge of state and federal laws. Uh, ability to train and supervise. Ability to communicate. So a lot of those will come with the experience and it also will come with the education 
And and so how do you subjectively say that, well, I've been working for four years and I know how to train an individual and I know how to communicate with someone and they haven't had the proper training to do that unless it's been through education and the, the working on the job on training. Uh, you know, this clerk position, I mean, it's, it's, it's an important position for, for the commission, you know, and uh, I, I just don't want to haphazardly say, well, we open it up to a whole bunch of people and we sit here and go through, because I told you, I could sit here just like when we did the register of voters. <coughs> how many people came, that's how many we need to be interviewing. So I'm always good with the larger number, but I'm listening to what I heard that day when we had our meeting we don't want to have that many. So if you don't want to have that many, you're going to have to tighten up your qualifications in order for you not to have it. Otherwise, I can say that, I'm going to use that, that same teacher again, that I qualify for this based on what I see. And then if I don't get an interview, that's going to raise questions. It's going to be like, well, why I didn't? And you can say, well, because we felt that, and I can say, I feel different. Oh, I could be a chemistry major. I mean, and I could have worked for um, Barksdale. Anything. I mean, there's there's a lot of different things that will come into play now because you open it up with a lot of different things that now other people can can qualify and we got to interview them. Because if a person says, well, I think I qualify based on what y'all put in there, and HR goes through them and say, well, no, you, you didn't. Now you got this battle that's going between HR and this person or these people that mm -hmm. potentially could happen. Keep the qualifications neat and clean like they are. We don't have to have it. But, you know, that's whatever y'all want to do. I'm just voting no today. We run this show. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, my last offering. And that is that my concern um, is not for this position uh, specifically. So I'm not speaking only to this position. It's simply what we do throughout the parish. All other, uh, I say all other, uh, the great majority of the other parish positions have the exact same uh, criteria that we changed. That's the only thing that I'm saying. So those concerns that we are addressing today does not only apply to this position, <coughs> those exact same concerns would apply to every position. So um, all those other positions, and there are a number of them, quite a few, and I have them if you'd like to see them, it requires the same thing that this position did require before we changed it. So I'm simply saying for that reason, I think that we should take another look and, um, and make sure that it can remains as inclusive as possible. And Commissioner Jackson had a concern, and I uh, share your concern, but I feel safe in saying that if someone was going to bring a case before the parish um, for changing anything in most cases it would be for limiting it and not for expanding it and I think that's pretty safe to, I'm sorry, sorry. you know in, in most cases if anyone's going to come and say well we want to uh, bring a case to the parish because you've opened it up uh, normally that's not the case normally it would be because we put limitations on it so just for that reason and uh, lastly I am not um, assuming or I'm not saying that anything <coughs> trumps education. So I'm not saying that experience is going to trump that by any means. That, that was not my point. And as I said, it has great value. It should be, and it will be, one of the determining factors when applicants Absolutely. come. I would just like to see everyone who's qualified or everyone who has experience have an opportunity. So that's my position on it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> I'm going to retract my uh, name so we can go ahead and vote on it. Well, we got HR here. Can I say something now? Since then, uh, this is uh, an HR <laughs> issue, and they'll fine-tune it. Should have been here done earlier. Right. You want to get on the board? Well, I'll wait to Thursday. That's okay. Fine. I'll wait to Thursday. I think we didn't Be talk the, to nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if we can Horses get it. Horses get You want? Let's get. She, she's she made here. it down here. <laughs> Come on, Cheryl. There's a commissioner that has a question for you, uh, Commissioner Jackson. So, uh, Cheryl, one of my questions was if we, from an HR perspective, and you caught the tail end of what Commissioner Lewis Johnson was saying, if we open this process back up, uh, 
and we change the requirement whether we uh, add or take away are we subjecting ourselves to any type of HR liability I just want to make sure that as a parish we're looking out for that responsibility because we don't want people because we've already started advertising for this position certainly yes I, I think as long as you um, what we'll do is just we'll reissue it we can still let it run two weeks um, because that's what we allowed for everyone two else weeks. that's what I would suggest okay that's our policy says we only have to do it for five days right. so but since we started with two weeks let's okay. continue so but, that, but that would get around any issue of mm -hmm. hey they changed the process right. midstream that's, we're giving the same amount of time to everybody else to you know give them an opportunity to apply all right and what's your thoughts on the uh, and I don't even think we asked you when we decided this but I heard Commissioner Lewis Johnson indicate that uh, <laughs> this is sort of standard for all of our positions or most of our positions or something like that. As far as allowing a degree or and or some kind right. of combination of experience. Right. Is, yes, that, is that typical? That's typical, yeah. except if you're looking at um, um, some positions, say, CPA, like an attorney, a CPA. Right. Like if mine, I don't require a, I have an HR degree, but I don't require an HR degree. Um, you know, it could be any kind of degree or 10 years experience or, okay. you know. So that's standard yes, language. Yes, preferred. Okay. Very yes, sir. Preferred, preferred, meaning that, Not you know, we to. may give preference to that person who has that degree. Yeah, sure. Thank, you for the, thank you for the clarification. Yes, probation officers. <laughs> yes, sir. That's another one, probation officers. Appreciate the clarification. Sure, certainly. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Bowman. And that was it. I just wanted just to um, ask you the question as well, Brother Jackson. That this is not a uncommon practice, correct? No, sir. In, in human resources. No, sir. And you probably can't answer for everyone, but from my experience, again, in higher education, over four universities and even in governmental setting, since this is a governmental setting, just like the city and parish as well, that, it's that uh, experience piece that also has some of our own employees currently and other people in the position that they're in, correct? Right. Okay, right. thank you. Thank you. So we're not going to cherry pick stuff now. Like our great Dr. Wilson. Correct. With the experience. Experience matters, just like you, Dr. Wilson. So Commissioner <laughs> Lyndon B. Johnson. The degree does too. <laughs> so um, with the salary that this position holds and the job description that we have listed on the website, is, is this unusual the way that it's written the way it was written, written prior to yeah the way that it's written now and it's advertised the way it's written now is it's advertised it's um i'm sorry i'm trying to with recall the, it's the degree the, yeah and five require. years preferred <laughs> experience five, five years preferred um you know again we kind of i work with directors you know the department heads to determine what kind of uh, experience and education they feel the position needs so so this is not unusual this is kind of basic language that you use mm -hmm. as well yes or sure like your department heads and your assistant directors there are going to be some positions that um, do require that degree mm -hmm. and First. you know do prefer so, additional it so to make this experience. even more with the salary that this position is holding in your professional experience and knowledge which you say that a degree is preferred and should be I would say mandatory. a degree is preferred a degree is preferred what's this, what's this, what's but I would not say it? it's required it's not limited to though it's it not be limited required. okay right yes sir all right because we have it that a college degree is wow. is a must and why are we changing it well, I ain't trying to change it. I'm just saying. I'm just asking the question. Mm -hmm. um, Sound person. All right. Based on that sale. Okay. All right. Cool. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you for coming down. Sure. I see no Thank other you. commissioners on the board. Thank Please you. vote. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Have a seat. Bro, <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> This moves to Thursday with a seven to one vote and four out of the chamber. Authorize reappointment to Kettle Parish Fire District. I move that um, we move these items, authorize appointment of Kettle Parish Fire District number 
four board, uh, James Robinson, also Susan Stevenson, also the uh, Restoration Crisis Center as a visitor, and authorize the year-end appointments um, to Thursday. Second. Actually, the year-end appointments will move to the December 5th meeting. Second. We don't have to have them on Thursday? No, we're moving to the 5th to give y'all time to look over those. All okay, right. thank you. Got a motion on the floor and a second. Uh, LBJ, is this for right now or last? For right now. Okay, LBJ. I want to, uh, remove uh, the Pine Hill Waterworks number eight reappointment. I'll second. All right, so we got a second. So, mm -hmm. substitute amendment or motion with a, uh, a friend, second. I, I, you know, I can do that. Can you I do a friendly? Can I accept that as a friendly amendment so we can just vote on this? Sure. sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, the new motion is to accept all those, move them Thursday, except with the uh, taking out the Pine Hill one. All right. I see no. Commissioners would like to speak, please vote. Move to adjourn? No, no, no. We still have <laughs> still to vote on the uh, <laughs> We still have to vote on the Pine Hill Waterworks. <laughs> Did you want to we you tell me that off there? Oh, we're moving. Okay. Okay. Well, next we have communications and committee reports. I see nobody? Yeah. yeah. I'm on now. Oh, you <laughs> back on it? Didn't even clear. LBJ. I want to go back to this traffic light. So at the corner of MLK and North Market, the traffic light is already there. What we've been talking about, when I brought up a long time ago, was having a turn signal from MLK turning going north on North Market. And based upon the city engineer that came here, said that you got to have some T-bones and some depths at the intersection, which I thought was ridiculous. Why we can't be proactive than reactive and put the turn signal there. There's more growth now that's going heading north on North Market, so when people are going down MLK, they're turning, <laughs> turning left, but you also got people coming from the North Highland area, coming from Brookshire's, mm -hmm. um, Walgreens, so you might see that the light for one turn. Right. And so what we've been talking about is go ahead and put a light there. It's a light on the other side, how ironic that is, mm -hmm that on the North Highland side, turning on North Market coming south, yeah, there's a light. A, a signal, turn, a, turn a signal. Light? Yeah, a, turn, a signal to turn to the left. Oh, that's not fair. But it's not one on the MLK going north up North Market. <laughs> there's no turn signal there. So that's a good that point. just throws me off. And I, and I brought that up. It's been its own record. Y'all have it on record. Then I brought this up. That's a good point. Years ago. And the city came in and said, well, you know, we don't have enough records of T-bones at this particular intersection. Yeah. And we dropped it from that point on. Said we couldn't do it. So now, since we in the business of working with our other government agencies, <laughs> I want to bring this up again. Okay. okay. The traffic flow is there. Right. Uh, you can do a traffic count all you want to, it's one there. So I don't know how many deaths have been on, on the Southern Loop, but we got documentation of, of deaths. Accidents. Uh, accidents right there. At that, at, that was one this past weekend. Mm -hmm. I think it was Friday. Mm -hmm. There was like three, four cars jammed up right there. So we we'll raise that issue again, Commissioner Johnson. With the okay. I, I, I really would appreciate that. Yeah, okay. that's And fair. so you got two commissioners working out. Mm. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Doug Dominic. So LB, LB. Yes. So if I am, I need talking. So if I'm headed from Vivian down North Market and I wanted to take a left there at Brookshire's, there's a green light that has a left. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. If I'm leaving Shreveport and headed back toward Vivian and I wanted to take a left there on North Market, I mean on Tail, there's a light there, I know. Yes, there's okay. a turn signal there. But if I'm going down MLK and I come up to North Market, that's where you're saying there's not a light. There's so no turn signal there. And right, there's if I'm too much traffic. Brookers, there's no turn. And there's a light there. There's a turn signal. Okay, right. okay. So three turn signals. It's not right. One direction doesn't have a turn signal. Okay, all right. That's what okay. I was trying to get clear. Yeah, I understand your issue. I, I think we'll John's contact. got a little bit different. Mine's a whole lot cheaper. Yeah, but I, I think you're. We'll contact the state. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, you know, I've had this issue brought up before. Harris <laughs> Road, State Road. I've always been told that's the state. The state's got to do that. Yes, sir. State's got. I got. I got a place up in uh, 
Um, North Caddo were very dangerous. I mean, we've been wrecks and can't get the state to do anything. And, you know, our position is that's a state road and the state needs to do that. So I just don't know but where we're going with all this. a life is lost, you can't get it back. That's I, the whole I point. I, I completely understand that. That's the point. That's, that's all that matters. A life is a life, no matter where they're from, or North Island, or what. Do right. Just do the okay, right thing. Uh, I'm done. Is that it, Commissioner uh, Jackson? Do the right thing. Uh, now, I'll, on this subject, uh, if you could get a, a cost analysis on how much the uh, turn signal is versus how much is constructing the new light, growth is growth, and I think it's good uh, that we have it. I just want to make sure that we are emphasizing public safety on our end up there in North, and I can't say North Caddo yet, but in North Shreveport, as we are on the southern tip. Um, and if I believe, hey guys, sorry. If, if if I if if I understand the way it works correctly, is even though it's a state road, it has to be endorsed by a local traffic and engineering. And so, if we have a traffic and engineering department, we can do our own traffic count. It doesn't have to come from the city of Shreveport. Um, so, you know, I don't know why we would just defer to their traffic. Um, that traffic information. But, oh, okay. No, I was just, I was addressing something else. So because yeah, sometimes we do talk to the state and we actually do want to do the study for us. I understand. Because they're, they're the experts. I understand, but I know that their thing is they have to have it to put a turn signal or a curb cut or all that. It has to have a local endorsement. Uh, it has to have a local endorsement. I do not think it gets specific and says it has to be the municipality. I think it just specifies that it has to be a local endorsement uh, from the local body to endorse it. So, so uh, I would ask us to look into that. And just in the midst of this conversation, I'm not objecting to the to the the need for the street light uh, down there. I just want to make sure that we have a concern, a care and a concern for public safety um, and citizens in both in both places. So, thank you, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank Commissioner Atkins. Um, thank you, Mr. President. I'm, I'm, I want to say I'm supportive of safety in uh, on North Market MLK as well. Um, I feel the book. And you know, but I do want to say we we're, we don't have a deal done with the city yet. We still have some humps to get over. Uh, so the city had done deal yet. I'm just hopeful that we can get it done. And when it all began, it looked somewhat differently than mm -hmm. it does now. Right. <laughs> you know, the, the lines have changed a little bit when this all began. So thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Atkins. Uh, I know Robert Glass is taking notes of that MLK no. drive, and uh, we can revisit professional drive again, and we'll throw a uh, resolution to the NLCOG <laughs> member. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm not going to leave District 10 out, but it uh, sounds like a resolution that all of us can get behind on starting to work on some of this stuff. Thank you, John, uh, John Atkins. Uh, Commissioner Bowman. And I'll be done. So here's the thing why it's important to listen and not talk all the time, because when you were talking, I wasn't listening originally as far as the location, but when I started listening about the location itself, if history serves me correctly, I, when I worked at Southern, what do you call it when someone hits you, they clip you? Is that the T-bone? That's not a T-bone. No, T-bone is if they hit you in the middle of the car and they're perpendicular. <laughs> okay, well, it was at the same intersection that they're talking about. I was going back from my lunch break at Southern. I got hit there, turning from there. So. I, you know, getting it clearer than that. That's why I'm talking out of order, because I feel what they're saying. Thank you. Okay. Second. Second. Third. Third. <laughs> 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 <laughs>